Hello everybody. How you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. I hope it's a blessed day for you. In fact, when you think about it, if you're watching this, it is a blessed day because God has given you another day for you to do something for Him. And so I encourage you to do whatever you can to do something for God. And uh, so consider what you can. Tomorrow, the Lord's Day, we'll be assembling with the saints and we look forward to that all the time. All right. Uh, the title of the lesson today is just simply beauty. Now, sometimes beauty uh, happens in places where we least expect it, and sometimes beauty comes from uh, places we're looking for. So, consider these things. See, I like to travel. I like to see things. I like to see new things. And it occurs to me that there is beauty everywhere. All you have to do is look for it. And not only do I enjoy driving around the countryside, I enjoy seeing new things and taking routes I've not traveled before. And I, I like to notice the flowers along the roadside. There's just about any color you can imagine. And as I drive through some areas, there are entire fields covered in these flowers. And the yellows are brilliant, the purples are majestic, the reds were deep, the pinks were dainty, and the blue is just... Uh, wonderful and the whites look like snow and this is especially true in the springtime and then you have patches and areas where you have a whole mixture of all these different flowers and that is just really something i consider to be beautiful and of course uh this got me to thinking of all the beauty that god has given us you know many people would love to see such colors but their eyesight is not what it used to be or and some are not able to see these at all. I feel sorry for those who are deprived of such beauty. And then, of course, one of the biggest problems is the people just do not take time to notice such beauty. See, most of us, we're, we're so intent on getting to our next destination, we fail to see what is on our journey. You know, hurry up and get there seems to be the focus of so many people today. And that's the way a lot of people are. A lot of people just do not notice the beauty. And now as you're driving along these roads and you see all these pretty flowers, every now and then you will see some people who have stopped by and they're taking pictures and uh, uh, perhaps they're picking some flowers to take to someone they care about. And just be careful which flowers you pick because picking some flowers is against the law, depending on what state you live in. So check your local laws before you start picking flowers off the side of the road. But still, I mean, it's the thought that counts. We know that. See, just about everyone has something in their mind that they consider beautiful. You know, the phrase, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, is very true. See, the mountains are majestic. I mean, the sea is serene and calm, at least most of the time it is. Sometimes, even when it's uh, going wild and crazy, that there's still a beauty associated with that. And there's peace by being in a garden or on a forest trail that's nobody else is around and all you hear is just the animals and the rustling of the wind through the trees. And I mean, there's just a calmness there. And sometimes maybe calmness can be found in, the, in, a, in when it's raining. I mean, so, and there's just many places that look good on a postcard or a picture puzzle. And yet the phrase, there's no place like home, still rings true. See, with all the color and the beauty of these wild flowers, and we still recognize that most people consider these nothing more than weeds. And that technically, that's what they are. They're weeds. But weeds are unwanted predators in our lawns and in our yards. But if they happen to be out on the roadside, I mean, we, we can appreciate them. And so, yeah, we, we take the effort to keep them out of our gardens and our yards. And we don't consider that, you know what, something beautiful is about to erupt in our presence. See, and there are other things which are beautiful. And everyone in their own right has a beauty about them in some way, some form. At least a lot of people do. Some people really don't have any beauty at all. And I'm not talking about physical appearance. I'm talking about attitudes and, uh, and what comes out of their heart. So beauty could be external, but internal beauty is by far the best kind. 
And this is what we call the inner person of the heart. And the Bible commands us to be so many different things that we're supposed to display duty that people look at. See, there's passages that tell us to be peaceable, to be loving, to be kind-hearted, to be true, and yes, even patient at times. I mean, there is a beauty in that. There's a beauty in self-control when you can do it. I mean, when, when people just lose control and just start throwing things around and hitting people, I mean, we don't consider that any beauty at all. And so what we do not want to happen is for us to put on some kind of fake facade. Yeah, yeah, and that happens. A lot of people do. Have you ever noticed those magazines that show photos of the stars without makeup? <laughs> oh, yeah. On the silver screen, they're beautiful. But without their makeup, they can be pretty ugly disgusting in their appearance. And all they have proven is they can make up themselves to be something they are not. A lot of people like that. They go to the, there's these places that take pictures and they, they put lots of makeup on you and make you look really pretty, but you know, that's not going to change who you are. You might be good looking on the outside, but you're still pretty much the same on the inside. And so many people do this not with makeup, but their actions. I mean, they can demonstrate beauty and become beautiful people. Not with makeup, not with the fake facade, but by their actions. See, they might do things which, well, they might be nice things, but you might consider them pretty things. It depends how you look at it. But see, inside, they can still be filthy. You know, Jesus told the Pharisees in Matthew 23, they were like the whitewashed tombs. Pretty on the outside, but still full of dead men's bones. And people who are hip, hypocrites fall into this category. And we are told that Satan's disciples disguise themselves as angels of light. And they do that. And so they're putting on that fake front. And, of course, what they do is capture souls along the way. So we have to be warned of that. See, Jesus told his disciples, consider the lilies of the field. He said that even Solomon in all his glory could not be arrayed as the flowers. See, Luke 12, 47, he said that. And so there's many ways to see the beauty of God. Notice in Psalm 96 and verse 9, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. And then also in Psalm 29 and verse 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I mean, we, we just think holiness is just an action or an attitude but God considers something of beauty. And so we should look, we should all look for the beauty of God and what God has done for us. I mean, the fact that he gave his son and his son died on the cross, I mean, that, that is absolutely beautiful beyond measure. See, the word of God, the Bible has its own beauty as it has been preserved for us. See, the church is described by Jesus as a beautiful bride without spot or blemish there in Ephesians 5, 27. And then, of course, we know that an act of kindness can be beautiful to someone who is downtrodden, who is hurting, and who, who needs a pick-me-up. In uh, Romans, he talks about the, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. I mean, quotation from Isaiah but God considers those who bring the message of God to others. It's a beautiful thing. We don't normally think of feet as something beautiful. I mean, some people might have some pretty feet, but uh, for the most part, most people's feet are not what we consider pretty. But when they bring something good, when they bring something like an act of kindness, I mean, uh, or the, the message that will help one get their soul saved, I mean, there's something beautiful there, and we have to recognize that as well. It's, it's considered beautiful by God, and we should also. And we need to realize the greatest act of kindness was performed by Jesus on the cross. See, sharing that message with people who need salvation is the most beautiful thing on this earth. While the earth has its own type of beauty, and people learn to appreciate this beauty, there's some things even more, more beautiful than what this earth has to offer now. It's what God has to offer. 
That is more beautiful. And so let us not forget that heaven is described as a beautiful and we all want to go there. And hopefully we can teach others so that they can go there also. In Proverbs 20, verse 29, it says, The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is in the gray head. Well, I don't know when the last time you looked at an old guy, but beauty is probably the last thing you saw. I mean, the, the wrinkles, the, the gray hair, I mean, all that stuff. But yet... And the fact that they have the gray hair, they have matured, and God says there is a beauty there. And we just need to learn to appreciate that. So let's all take time to look for the beauty surrounding us, and remember to thank God for making it possible. Yes, God gives us the beauty. It's all around us. All we have to do is just open our eyes and pay attention. So consider those thoughts. That's our lesson. Lord willing, we'll be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Okay, bye-bye for now.